Welcome to episode six of the off season, season two, where today I'm in Selbridge GA Club, where I'm going to be speaking to Kevin O'Callaghan, Kildare's Player of the Year for 2023. <laughs> Everything's All nice good. to meet you. Same yourself. You're very welcome Cheers. to episode six of the off season, season two. Good to be here in Selbridge. Great facilities. We're going to do a bit of a workout. Perfect, yeah. Get the no lungs going. Yeah, too right. Back training. But, yeah, back training. Yeah, yeah. Injury free. <laughs> Injury free, thank God. That's all that matters. Great stuff. So we'll do a bit of a workout, have a bit of a chat, and we'll get on the grass. The pitch is nicely thawed out there. So a bit of shooting, great stuff. Upstairs we go. Yeah, Let's perfect. Go. Cheers. Yes, Kev, it's good to be here in uh, Selbridge. And thanks for having me. The gym looks great. We're going to have a bit of a chat yeah. and then we're going to dive in to a workout. And as we're doing that, you told me before the camera started, you wouldn't be the best man to warm up, would you? With a foam roller. So <laughs> no, we're just going to have these as props. <laughs> okay. Wouldn't be the biggest fan of the foam rollers now. Yeah. I prefer my physio table. Yeah. Place. Yeah. Easy, easy. And we are going to bring you back as we usually do in these episodes. You've watched a couple of episodes, yeah, have yeah. you? Um, we'll do the shooting challenge after the gym session. Take you back, let's say, you know, under 12s, under 14s. I, from an outsider, would have always seen Selbridge as a, you know, a big, well-known team. Um, but there's a lot of probably Division 1 teams that that rotate, win championships in Gildare. You've, obviously, you've Nace over the last couple of years that have won three in a row. Um, you would have had other winners before Nace. Yeah, Sarsfields, Moorfields would have always been. Yeah, there's usually fun. no real massive dominant for 10, 15 years in no, Kildare, really. which is a good thing. Yeah. Um, but growing up, you all as Division 1. Yeah, yeah, always. So, like, I would have started playing here in the club when I was like five or six years old. Yeah. Um, back then, the youngest team that they had was under nine. So, I played three or four years under nines when I first started. So, that probably gave you a leg up by the time you're into year three or four. You're well you're, able. You're probably the same size yeah, as you probably, back then. I probably was. I probably was. But no, uh, very good. Like, we would have always won back in like under nines, under tens, like the whole way, even as far as Fela. I remember we lost the Fela semi final or Fela final. Who was that in? I know um, it's tough. To She's think. second, I was 14, so I was 13, and then born in 97, so yeah, maybe 22. Right, okay. So, yeah. Where was that feel? I know feel is different. Yeah, it was, in, it was in a toy, so I think it was actually right, yeah. that year. Um, yeah, we, we missed a 13 yard free at the end to level the game. So, who so, was it? So, name uh, shame. I won't, I won't name and shame, <laughs> I won't name and shame, but some things you'll never forget. Um, but no, obviously, the whole way up then would have been competitive under 15s, under 16s, lose like there, thereabouts, always losing semi finals, losing finals. And then minor, same thing. Um, probably I played three years of minor here. Now, so. who was the teams that would have been beating you consistently in the underage? Um, Sarsfields were always very, very strong. Clane were very strong. Um, Nace weren't as strong at my age group now. Um, but again, they probably, I think in the last few years, they've won five or six minors in a mm. row. So that's where a lot of their senior players are They're coming big from time, now. Aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they would be big. Um, probably the biggest town in the yeah. but no. Um, yeah, Sarsfields were always very, very good. Clane were very good my age as well, and they've kind of converted that to senior level now as well. Right, okay. Um, but yeah, we kind of, my my age group now that would have played minor, there's probably only two or three of us that converted through to the senior panel in the end, which isn't a great conversion rate compared to other teams. Right, okay. And nowadays in the current senior group, would there be more of a, more coming through the minors? Not really now, to be honest, we have a fairly like, like probably a good age profile for winning the championship now, like the bulk of our team would all be maybe late 20s, early right, 30s, okay. um, few exciting young players coming through from the likes of the Calair under 20s and that, yeah. um, but I suppose these days it's hard to get young lads to stick around playing football when there's yeah. so much life has to offer. Yeah, yeah, no, I know all about it, so it's very important to try and keep those leading those 16, 18, 21 year olds in the senior team yeah. um, and usually the teams and usually the players I've spoke to in the previous episodes, the successful teams, that's what they do. So uh, there's a lot of quite big names or you know, county men in the past from Selbridge 
Yeah. Isn't there like Paddy Brophy? Was he? He's, yeah, yeah, Paddy Brophy. He's still yeah, he's still, he's one of our joint captains now himself. And Mick O'Grady would be joint right. captain. He was Australia? Year. Yeah, he was Australia, yeah. Right, okay. um, Mick is obviously the current Kildare captain as well. Yeah. Um, Fergal Conway would have played for Kildare for years as well. And he's still playing for the club? He's still, still playing for the club. Hugh McGrillan as well, cornerback for Kildare for years. Yeah. He's still going, I think he's 36 or 37 now. He was starting this year, championship flying. Um, myself, Kevin Flynn, who I've played with since I was he's five really, years old. He's a star stud, we bit. Yeah, and even like the under-20s, we would have had three lads starting on an under-20 All-Ireland winning team and another young lad, Killian Brown, coming through as well. So yeah. look, we've, we've the, the abundance of talent there, it's just about converting it into actually winning championships as opposed to getting the semi-finals and getting the finals. Yeah, absolutely. And you spoke there on... We spoke of Nace, obviously. They hadn't won it for a good 30 years. Yeah. like so. And you have won it now 2008. So what is that, nearly that's 15 years? Yeah, 15, 16 years this year. So yeah, I know, look, for a flow of our size, we know we're probably underperforming. But the, kind of, well, this this year anyway, good progress actually getting to a final. I suppose semi-finals yeah. have probably loomed over us a little bit in the past. So look, Nace didn't win one for 30 years yeah. and they went on to win three in a row. So you have to stay optimistic in that sense. We know we have the players and we have a very good manager in Michal McDermott. He's won everywhere he's been. So, um, Cavan? yeah, Cavan, yeah, oh, yeah that yeah. is mad because I was speaking to Parnell's lads last week, like the guy mobs with Parnell's, yeah, yeah. and uh, he was with Parnell's. Yeah. And he goes, One of the players goes, You know, Michael McDermott, and I said, No, I don't. And he goes, He's from Cavan, all oh, right. And then a week later, yeah. he mentioned him, he's deadly, yeah, yeah he's, he's a very good coach, yeah. he's, he's the manager, won, yeah, he's won every, he's never been to a club and not won. That's brilliant, yeah, he's with Parnell's, and that is that's very interesting because at, last week I didn't. Just for an hour ago, I didn't know who he was. And I mean, yeah, I, even I Wolf Tones, he won a championship with Wolf Tones in Mead. Yeah. And they were like a top eight team at best right. before he went there. Um, same thing, he won championships in Calvin, won championships down in Clare with a club, Kilmurray Bricken or something, brought them yes. to an All-Ireland final. Yes. So, I know we've good calibre there. Paul Barden, who played for Longford for years, is one of our selectors as well. Paul's, right. Paul's deadly too. So look, we have the, <laughs> we've the players, we've the managers. Yes. It's just about converting it now into a bit of success. Very good. Now, did you go to college? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was Minute University. And did um, you play Freshers and Sigerson? Yeah, I did indeed. So my Freshers year, I actually, my first year I went there, I changed course then. So I played Freshers up until the All-Ireland semi-final stage and I had to be finished the course by the 31st of January to be allowed to come back in the following September. Right, okay. So I played the whole way, whole league. We won, we won the league, Freshers. Got the All Ireland semi final then, and I was stepping away. And actually, Kevin Flynn was stepping away as well. So, two of us, we were both midfield. And Con O'Callaghan against UCD, he absolutely tore them to sunder. Yeah, so, you, did, did you play one Sigerson year? Uh, I played four Sigerson oh, years. Oh, right, after okay. That. So, that was fresher, and then I played four Sigerson years after that. Minus, um, I think they, they won a fresher last year, was it? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we were at Sigerson level now. We were. Sigerson was always a straight knockout, yeah, yeah, up against this, like UL, robbed us one year in Limerick, mm. yeah, same thing, we went up to Jordanstown, up to, no, no, he wasn't, we went up to Jordanstown, went up to Queens, like one lot, one point losses here and there, so we never, we were never really successful at Sigerson level yeah. in championship. But it's great to play with other people in different counties. Oh yeah, it is, it is, even Stephen O'Hanlon I would have played with, yeah, man, for yeah. Man, yeah, he was deadly. Um, but again, it's good. A lot of the Kildare lads would go to Manute. They're very good for like giving Kildare lads scholarships. So a lot, a lot of that team. Even I was looking at the Sigerson team that was playing last night. They probably yeah. had probably ten lads from Kildare on the panel, which very is very good. good to see. How far away is Manute from here? It's ten minutes, fifteen minutes. All right, yeah, okay. Yeah. So nice and close on the doorstep. Yeah, perfect for the. You didn't live in campus room. No, no, no. Sure, I could live at home, and it was handy drive happy over in the morning. Happy days. So. The club scene, we'll look at them, it's, it's now the end of January, so you're probably back up and running. Yeah, when does yeah, your league start in the club? Uh, league in the club starts, I'm probably the worst person to ask that. Uh, I think it starts the middle of March, end of March, right, so it's okay. not too soon. And in Kildare, what way does it work? Is there star games or is it just the county boys are not involved? Uh, county boys aren't involved, so we won't the, be back The league now. at all? No, not at all, so we won't be back now. Um, we won't be back now until we finish up in right. July or so. Now in Dublin, uh, you can actually pull your last two league games if it if you want, and then use them use your county men. There's none of that goes. No, on no, no. Down. Last year, now we our club got to the league semi final actually against Nice as well, and we our season had just finished before the semi final. So I think they kind of time it around. The county lads might be back for a semi final gotcha. league final. Right. Um, I was actually I got an injection in my knee just before it, so I wasn't actually able to play myself. Okay. But it's the time of the year a lot of lads might go on holidays to get them over and done with, so they're not missing any championship stuff. Yeah. So. 
very good, okay. Well, I'll tell you what we're gonna do now. We're gonna jump into a workout. Um, we're gonna get the workout on the screen and it is gonna be a partner workout okay, because there's nice. no way that I'm going up against you, okay? <laughs> We've seen from your Instagram, TikToks, what weights you can lift and I'm, I'm all, five foot four. All Nothing. for sure, all for sure. So we're gonna start the workout and then mid, mid workout, we'll enjoy the break and we'll have a chat then. We'll dive into the kind of scene, all right? Perfect, perfect, Nice. Great work out well done. Yeah. This episode is kindly sponsored by Whoop. Effective stress management is vital for GA athletes to maintain both physical and mental well-being. The pressure of competition, train demands and performance expectations can contribute to elevated stress levels. By using the stress monitor feature, players can prioritize stress management. GA athletes can foster a balanced mindset, improve focus and mitigate the risk of burnout, ultimately ensuring a sustainable and successful athletic career. Hit the link in the description to get started this off-season. Okay, Kev, so we were brought into the county panel in 2018. Yeah, about that, yeah. Who was the manager then? Uh, Keane O'Neill would have given me my chance there, yeah. Did you play any league? Yeah, I played a few league matches. Um, played maybe one or two or three from the bench. Um, first time actually getting a bit of game time was championship against Dublin, um, Leinster semi-final I think it was, we had a few injuries and I got about 50 minutes in Crow Park against Dublin which was... 28 teams, that's Super 8s? No, the year, just one year after Super 8s. Okay, right, right, okay, and how far did Kildare go that year? Um, we lost to Tyrone and Newbridge the round just before the quarterfinals. Right, okay, when was the Newbridge in the worst scene? That was the one year before I came on to so the So you panel. weren't involved in that? I wasn't involved in that, I can't take credit for that Were one. Were you at the match? Yeah, I was, yeah. Very good, and even from, a, you're a neutral fan that Yeah, I was deadly, yeah. Yeah, and you beat me all that, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I was talking to Lee Keegan about it, he talked to me, but on it, he probably... Wasn't the highlight of his career. Yeah, I'd say not now, but uh, they got enough days. They got us back. Mayo knocked us out of the championship there two years ago, so he Very got good. his revenge on that one anyway. Very good. So 2018, um, now you mentioned that probably you're a full forward in a club underage going up. When did that transition move to midfield? Yeah, so even when I was in on the Kildare panel that first year, um, Kildare looked at me as a wing forward type player yeah. that year. Um, ah, I probably didn't have the condition that I have now or the size I had now either, so I was probably falling in the middle of a bit of everywhere. So when that season ended, went back to my club, broke my left foot, first club championship match, was out for three months, came back, first training session with the college, broke the same bone and the same oh, foot geez. again, got an operation then. So Jack O'Connor had just come in as Kildare manager that year yeah. then. He actually, what year was that? Um, was that 2020, COVID was year? Okay. 2019, 2020. Yeah, yeah. Um, he actually, he dropped me from the panel then when I broke the foot the second time. He was like, oh, go on, good luck, <laughs> see you later. So, right, okay. Um, and then obviously COVID came too, so um, a lot of that training was done by the lads behind closed doors. So and you that didn't play stuff. the COVID year, did you not? No, I didn't play the COVID year at all. So I, I basically had two years back to play with my club, okay. get my body right, put in the work. And then it was actually funny how it worked out. My first match back with Kildare then was round one of the league against Kerry in Newbridge and Jack was the Kerry manager. So um, we drew with them that day. So good, good result for ourselves in Newbridge. So that was 2021 you come back in. Or yeah. 20, 20 and 2019, you didn't really speak on that much, did you? How did Kildare go? Uh, we lost 2019. We lost to Tyrone, I said. Oh, the, was that the yeah, that game? Was, All right, okay. So um, 2018 was... Yeah. 
I was that was the, I think 2018 was Super 8 Snooper do you know where yeah, it is yeah, yeah. I okay, wasn't there yeah. I wasn't involved no, but no, you no. were involved that year in the league I was 2018 no no I think my second year right okay so 2019 I was in Keen O'Neill's last year anyway right okay and then Jack O'Connor came in. And then Jack O'Connor came in. Did I you get much training with Jack? No, uh, one or two training sessions. Then Not broke much. Him she both, never yeah. really got to see what he was all about. No, I didn't know. That lad spoke highly of Jack, in fairness. Yeah. And obviously, he went down to Kerry and won in all Ireland as well. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, to be honest, it was probably the best thing for me. Yeah. I was probably happy to be part of the panel when I was a young lad in there. And then when I came back the second time, I wasn't, I wasn't going back in to just be a panel member. Yeah. I was going back in to start. So. Um, I suppose that was a big shift in mindset. Yeah. It also gave me two years to, like, you can't underestimate the value of playing with your club. I got two good club years with Selbridge, playing every league match, playing every championship match, building up the minutes into the legs. Like, when you're a, when you're a player that's not playing regularly on a county panel, you don't get much football through the year. Mm-hmm. It's the odd challenge game here and there, A versus B matches. So it was good to actually get the football into the legs. I probably progressed a lot more than I would have if I stayed on the panel for two years yeah. as a rotational player if that makes sense yeah no absolutely and then I would say now last year would be a breakthrough year would that be right uh, the year before probably so, uh, so okay. Glenn and the boys first year um, I would have played pretty much every minute of every match um, probably finishing the year strongly in that Mayo game probably my best game ever for Calair. Um that was last year that was two years ago now. two years ago and, oh jeez my, my brain in terms of championships how did you just get on for the um, so game? same thing this disappointing year that was the year Dublin beat us very well in the Leinster final yeah. the five goals match um, we dusted ourselves down and we drew Mayo in that next kind of qualifier yeah. game before the quarterfinals and same thing I think Mayo beat us by a point or two that day yeah. so. I'm just going to touch on the Leinster final like when you're going in to play against Dublin like I always listen to podcasts and stuff leading up to Leinster finals and whoever's in it you know it's very hard obviously like it's just very hard to mentally big yourself up to play probably one of the best teams of all time. Of course, some of them's gone now, but now they're after winning All Ireland last year. Like mentally, that must be a very tough year, is it? A yeah. very tough week to go into that game. Yeah. Like no one would you pick up Fenton, would you? Or would yeah, you? yeah. I don't mind. I'd rather mark, uh, rather mark Fenton and Kevin Feely, who I play midfield with. So okay. I'll say that much for nothing. But um, yeah, look, I think that Leinster final year, we actually went in with massive confidence yeah. in the group. We had beaten them in the league that year. So we beat them in Newbridge by a point or two in the league division two or division one that was that year, I think. Yeah, Dublin got relegated. Division one that year, yeah. we beat them in the league in Newbridge. Went in probably the most confident the group has ever been going into a Leinster mm-hmm. final. And we were just shell-shocked the goal in the first minute. And then the goals kept flooding and it was damage limitations then at that stage. But look, even last year, they beat us by a point in Crow Park in the league. They beat us by two points in the Leinster semi-final. We're getting much, much closer to them. The game are, games are competitive. And I suppose the sickening thing for us is, obviously, they beat us tightly last year in the semi-final of the Leinster and then went on to win the All-Ireland. Shows we're not far away. Mm-hmm. Monaghan beat us last kick of the ball. They were in an hour in semi final, so look, we're definitely not a million miles away anyway. We have the talent in the group, it's just about, I suppose, performing a bit more consistently and a bit more regularly. Yeah, yeah. And do you think there's a massive change when you go into Crow Park? I know Kildare probably hasn't had the best of days out in no, Crow Park, pro- probably not now. But look, we've a really athletic team, I suppose that's probably something that's changed under this management group of Glenn and the boys. Um, like we're really really athletic we'd match anyone mm. stride for stride I suppose that's why we probably had good games against the likes of Mayo who will let you run at them but they'll run back at you so look we've an athletic team the big pitch in Crow Park suits us every team's going to get kickouts off in Crow yeah. Park so um, obviously 100% most of yeah. 100% of our kickouts in Crow Park every time we play so um, yeah no, mm. it's, it's exciting now this year the way the draw goes with more than likely Westmead probably Leinster quarter final um, obviously not looking past that but probably loud semi-final yeah. and hopefully Dublin in the final and get right. to kind of wrong the, wrong the last few years anyway and put them right right okay and just touch a wee bit that Mon game last year that must have been just a sink, sinking feeling in the gut after the game how was the mood around yourself and the camp and stuff yeah after? Oh, it was a tough one to take to be honest um, we put a lot into that game we performed well we probably did like obviously we probably didn't do enough to win in the end but small little decisions here and there that probably could have went our way or 50-50s that we just end up on the wrong side of but look as I said Monaghan those Monaghan boys know how to win you know all about that now so um, yeah they went on it's a tight match over our man the quarterfinals and then obviously yeah. tight enough with Dublin in the semi-final then as well so look I suppose you can take you can look at it both ways 
you can feel sorry for yourself in one sense or you can say, look, this is how close we actually are. Yeah. We just need to find that extra 1%, whatever it may be. And that could be the difference between getting over the line and then once you find that, as they say, winning is a habit. So yeah. just create that win and have it once and then keep it rolling. And I'm just thinking there, Kildare did win number 20 All-Ireland. When was that? Yeah, that was... Ago? Did they win the under 20 All-Ireland this yeah, year? Yeah. I think this year. Oh, was just, it this year? Okay, this year, yeah, they yeah. lost the All-Ireland final two years ago to Tyrone in under 20. So there, there has to be something in the pipeline, obviously, with these lads coming. Like There obviously can't be you know, winning All-Irelands in their 20s and then three or four years later not getting the semi-finals of the All-Ireland. So there has to be something there that's maybe not clicking or... I'm not putting you on the spot, but for you lads to come together and ask those questions, I'd imagine he's probably... Yeah, I suppose a lot of the under-20s now would have been brought into the panel this year. So again, nice, like fresh faces into the panel. Again, they'll bring energy, enthusiasm, all Mm. that type of stuff, a lot of legs as well. So that's good to see too. But again, there is a massive step up from under-20 level to senior level, more so just in the progression of your actual physique. So the lads that will put the work in or have put the work in over the last few months from maybe when they finished under 20s, they'll be the ones you'll mm. see in a jersey now, in a white jersey at senior level this year. So um, When's the league, first league game next week? First league 27? game, Cavan, yeah. Cavan next week. Cavan, so. right, okay. And yous, are, yous would be your main goal to get out of Division 2? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, that's first and foremost, the main goal, get out of Division 2. Our, all of our home games this year are in Carlo. Um, Newbridge is being redeveloped. Are you just not playing the first game of Croker? No, no, no. Was that not talked that about? That was talked about. I thought it was set in stone. No, no, no. no, no. With yeah, no, on. no, no. They didn't go ahead with that. So all of our home games are in uh, Carlow. So we actually have four home games this year in Carlow. Have you played in Carlow before? Yeah, yeah. Our championship final this year was Carlow. So bad memory on that one. But oh, right. we played a few times last year with Kildare. We played Longford. Or we played Wicklow in the championship in Carlow as well. So you're happy enough. Yeah, we're happy enough. Nice and big And will Carlow share that as well? Um, I think Carlow are sharing that as okay, well. Okay, yeah. very good. So Calvin, and that's a home game or a home game? game? Home game, Right, very good. Then we're off to Enniskillen to play for Mana away round two. And then I think we've Donegal at home in round three. Donegal. So yourselves, Donegal and Armagh. Yeah. And two go up. Uh, two go up. And Cork. Cork could be very strong now as well. Cork, in fairness, yeah. Cork. Division two is going to be very strong. Very this year. competitive. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, from Anna, Cavan, Mead, and then Loud as well. So Mead will have a shout there too. Yeah, Mead the will. Top. Yeah. Um, obviously, local rivals as well. So yeah. there'll be a bit of added kind of. <laughs> Would Mead be the biggest rivals then? Well, D- or Dublin, Dublin. Dublin anyway, especially this side of the county. I yeah. suppose Kildare touches a few different counties. Yeah. So you yeah, ask someone closer to kind of yeah. Enfield, they might say Mead. And would you have any mates over? Right, Kevin, we're all from Dublin. Or not really now. To be honest, no, stick to Kildare now, boys. I wouldn't be friends with Perfect. Anyway. We're going to go through our 16 quick fire questions. Yeah. And we didn't do this the last episodes, so um, we're going to go through 16 questions. And the reason why they're 16 is because there's about 16 weeks in a regular club off season, okay? Very good. Maybe not your yeah. season, but <laughs> two weeks, maybe. Club season, there would be. So I'll kick off, okay? These are pretty quick fire. So if you weren't a footballer, what other sport do you think you'd excel at? Uh, rugby, probably. Did you try rugby before? Uh, I played it maybe. I played rugby, rugby soccer, football, hurling the whole way up. Um, obviously chose Gaelic football in the end, but I suppose just with my build and yeah. athleticism, rugby would probably suit me a little bit more. I wouldn't be technical enough for soccer now. Number eight, would it be? <laughs> I would have been full back, actually. Right, was that 15? Yeah, I wouldn't 15, be the best Yeah, 15, yeah. Very good, okay. Which Kildare teammate has the worst diet? Worst diet? Ooh. <laughs> Who do I throw under the bus here? <laughs> Um, I'm going to have to say Barry Kelly. Right, not a great man for pre-match meals. Uh, uh. Boiled eggs. <laughs> <laughs> Stinking eggs. Okay, any hilarious superstitions or rituals uh, among yourself or even the squad? Yeah, myself, actually, I have a funny one. I watched the last episode of The Last Dance, Michael Jordan's uh, basketball thing on Netflix before every championship game. Really? Yeah. Right, very, okay, very good. And do you, the first time you watched that was probably lockdown, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you just loved it? Yeah, just loved it and just gets me going before a match. Yeah, Very so good. that's my superstition, yeah. And why only championship games, not league and stuff? <laughs> not as important, is it? <laughs> I don't know about that now. Don't put me on the spot. <laughs> so what's your funniest memory from a team bonding session and the stands out? Team bonding... Um, You're all very professional, are you? All very professional. That one was uh, maybe training camp last Two years ago, maybe one of the lads, I won't name him now, we were asked to think of a game face for from our psychologist perspective of like what we represent on the pitch. Like so mine would have been like aggressive, dominant, relentless. Um and one of the lads thought that they had to send back a picture of them given oh their my face. Oh god. <laughs> and send back a picture of his face. <laughs> That's a good one now. Fuck, you try to get our hands in that photo. Um your least favourite football ground, it could be club or county. 
Um, I played a championship match when I was minor in Loud. That pitch was. Ah, atrocious. you're not the first one to say yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah. Loud's home. Home, yeah. That would have been Drogheda. Yeah. yeah. Very think, far yeah, up and oh, down. It's and, up and down and everything, yeah. Yeah, you're, someone else said that. Who would have said that? Probably, I um, can't remember, was it John Heslin or someone, or even before that, might have said um, that ground. So, not nice one. I actually played in that ground as well when I played up in Loud. So, not good. Morning routine? Um, I'm in work early doors, so in work for half seven in the morning, up nice and early, uh, coffee straight away as soon as I get to the office, that type of thing. Would I don't you, really eat straight away, I kind of have a first meal of, I, the lads give I give me a bit of stick, I have turkey burgers, Mexican rice and broccoli maybe twice or three times a day, that's my first meal, I'll have that about 11 o'clock or so, so generally just a coffee and maybe a protein bar in the morning. Right, okay, it, so yeah. you don't really see breakfast, and you just see meal one, meal two, yeah, meal three. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Interesting, okay, and most memorable game? Most memorable game. The Ross Common one's obviously fresh in the mind last year, um, beating them by a point in the championship. Um, Kevin Feely with the last minute mark from the sideline and kicking a score off his left foot. So right. obviously that's a one that's fresh in the memory. Yeah. But yeah, that's one that I would have been involved in anyway. And then maybe as a neutral or as a supporter, um, the Super 8 year when Kildare and Newbridge are nowhere against Mayo yeah. would probably be the most memorable for a lot of Kildare fans. Yeah, and that Newbridge... You're only you're 27, you're going to be 20, early 20s you were. Yeah, yeah, Great yeah. Great yeah. around that time, very good. Pete, just checking that's recording, it is, yeah? Yeah. Okay, sorry, no, sorry. Is there a coach who significantly influenced your playing style? Playing style, maybe not so much. Johnny Doyle is involved as a selector with us now with Kildare okay. and he would have had great belief in me. He was my Sigerson manager with Minute, and oh, he was right. probably a lot of the reason for I was maybe brought in by Keane O'Neill that first year. Johnny would have been singing my praises to him and getting my foot in the door anyway. So yeah, that's definitely someone who would have had a big influence on maybe me getting as far as I did. Yeah, and what's Johnny like around the around the deadly? Room yeah, stuff, I suppose like all of our selectors, they've all kind of talked the talk and walked the walk. So, um, yeah, Johnny, like it's hard as a Kildare man not to yeah. listen to the lads, especially someone like Johnny, yeah. so, such a won an intermediate championship for his club this he's year. Never, as well. He's never he's put, still going. putting the boots on again. <laughs> I I'd say like a lot of fans would love to see that now. All right. Yeah. Um, so, do you uh, are you currently tracking performance to see you have a whoop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wear my whoop now religiously for maybe the last two years or so. Um, I find it's obviously great when you're part of a team sport. Sometimes you can't dictate your training load as much as maybe yeah. an individual who can. But again, I'd use the data a lot. If, for example, if I have a poor recovery, I'll make sure to go to bed a little bit earlier the next night. Kind of practice good habits there, or I might get down to training that little bit earlier. Maybe stretch out a little bit more, see the physio, make Very sure good. I'm not tight, make sure. I'm well hydrated my nutrition's on point so again you can read into a lot I love looking at my sleep on it in particular just to make sure that I am sleeping enough um, as you know obviously sleep is massively important you do most of your recovery while you're sleeping so that's a huge aspect for me to track and how accurate it is I used to use like a fit you wear them in matches and stuff yeah wear them matches you strap yeah. it up or yeah, wear... strap it up yeah strap it up okay yeah. there's also a bicep band if you ever is need there? to check yeah. that out yeah okay. it's very very good you know some people might like to, to wrap to very good. strap it up yeah but no, it was fantastic. Um, who's your childhood football idol? Um, probably would have been Dermot Early. Um, right. Obviously played around the middle of the field for Kildare and won a couple of All-Stars as well. He was top class. He was a selector with us with Kildare last year. He stepped away this year now. Um, but yeah, he would have been someone I looked up to. I suppose I played my whole playing career mm. as a child, as a midfielder. So that would have been positionally as what, what I would have looked up to myself as a kid. Brilliant, okay. So what stadium has the best atmosphere in your opinion? Um... It's a tricky one. To be honest, the St. Conlet's Park in Kildare, the best atmosphere I've ever played in was our Division 1 game against Kerry two years ago in Newbridge. Full house, they had to delay the throw in because it was mm, so full. Yeah. Like 15,000 people packed in there. It was electric, yeah. literally the whole place. How is that? Can you buzzing. hear your teammates? Oh, it's like that was the best atmosphere I've ever played in. Like that's better than 40 How'd or 50,000 in Crow just... Park. We drew, yeah, we drew. Right, yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah, good buzz right around, good buzz around Kildare. Yeah, exactly. But um, no, that's that's the best kind of feeling. Again, we played, I think we played Mayo in the championship in Carrick. That had a deadly atmosphere as well. I suppose sometimes you get a better atmosphere out of maybe a yeah, smaller ground that's full as opposed to a half empty Crow Park yeah I say that's not really that nice to play. Uh, it's not that nice obviously the pitch the facilities are top class but again the app like sometimes you need the bit of the crowd to mm. get you up and get so you going you'd prefer out of Crow Park um, 
So I'd prefer a full Crow Park than yeah, play yeah. that much. But yeah, if it was going to be like some of those league games, our league games could have been in Crow Park where you might have had 10 or 20,000 at them. Yeah. There'd be no atmosphere there now where at least in Carlo, because our fans can come and support Brilliant. us. We can get a good backing behind us and there can be a buzz and an atmosphere for the games. Exactly what you want. Very good. So what do you feel is the most important skill for a GA player? Um, again, I suppose it probably depends positionally. Um, as a midfielder, probably... Well, I'm probably <laughs> not the best fielder in the country, but as a midfielder, first and foremost, probably your field. And obviously, That's probably changed over the years. Yeah, probably your ball skills. Again, like if you're very, very athletic, if you're aggressive, if you're a good tackler, if you work hard, probably work rate is probably the best skill. It's probably not a skill as such, but something that anyone can use. It takes no talent to work harder than the people around you to put in blocks, to put in tackles. Um, so yeah, that's definitely something I think that gets a little bit underappreciated. Obviously, not everyone's on the pitch to be kicking the fine scores, so mm. you need a few workhorses around the middle. Good stuff, okay. So who is the toughest midfielder you've ever faced? Um, I've marked Brian Fenton a good few times. Obviously, never easy there, but to be honest, Kevin Feely, probably my midfield partner with Kildare, we played a tie, his club, in the club championship semi-final this year. And GC gave me an absolute awful time <laughs> plucking balls above my head. So, um, yeah, I'd say Kevin Feely probably is the toughest because it's a different threat. I don't mind on the deck. I'll run with anyone, really. I'd back myself there. But maybe if I'm being pulled into a full back line where I'm not as comf comfortable under mm. a high ball for a mark, that's what, yeah, probably yeah. where I struggle with Kevin Feely a little bit more. Right, OK, very good. Yeah, so it's good that he's on your team too. <laughs> yeah, too right. <laughs> having them next year if you could there's a lot of talk now about rules and new rules being brought in to help evolve the game you know keeping three or four men inside the 45 and whatnot. but is there any uh, sorry any rule in football that you would change or anything that stands out I think the advanced, advanced mark isn't doesn't really take it out. yeah take it out probably um, it's more so I don't mind if it's an actual mark kicked in long high catch but some of the ones where you see someone standing yeah. a foot outside the 45 with a low pass to the chest yeah. 15 metres away that's even the one QC got against oh who was it well but there was a couple of short ones against yeah, the Mon, even the they? even the last one of that match where the Monaghan player called the mark and the referee didn't give oh, it yeah, and it should yeah. have been probably a free out the other way then yeah, yeah. so so it's a lot of confusion there with the yeah. little little small passes, yeah. Um, so if you could have any Kildare teammate skill for a day, what would it be and why? Um, Daniel Flynn's pace, probably just absolutely electric. Do you suppose that fast now? <laughs> that quick, <laughs> I is he? Would, oh, I wouldn't pass the ball to anyone. You'd be fucking <laughs> maybe wall passes here and there, one twos. But geez, he's absolutely electric. If you could run that quickly, I don't think you'd be caught by anyone. Very good. Okay, last question. If you had to pick one, one person whether it's uh, overall skill, who would it be? Johnny Doyle or Dermot Early? I'll be killed now. Dermot Early's not part of our management <laughs> team anymore. So I'll go with Johnny. <laughs> great stuff, great stuff. Happy days, yeah. All nice. 16 done, yeah. Good Lovely. stuff. That's us. Very good. Right, Kevin, shooting time. Okay, so we have 10 balls. You know the drill. Yep. I'll run through it any, for anybody back home that doesn't know what the challenge is. We have three balls across the 13, three across the 21, three around the D and one on the 45. The big catch is the balls down the middle on the 13 and 21. Has to be a weaker foot, left foot. Yep. Oh, which one? You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you'll know straight away, left foot. And the 45 can be off the ground for two or out of your hands outside of the boot with the left foot. Okay, so we're going to start, uh, we usually start in the top right, so we'll make our way over here, okay? <laughs> no warm-up, no nothing. No. No major hamstring issues, I hope. No. That's good. Good with the hamstrings. That's good. Uh, icy. Not too bad now, it's all a good bit. What do you think it here, left or right foot? Oh, I'll decide when I look at it. Left foot, I think. Left. So try and find a nice piece of grass where it's a bit soft and stuff. I know the ground is quite hard. I'll let you focus. Take your time, okay? Well done, Kev! Woo! Good lad! Off the mark, geez, I was worried. <laughs> Woo! I wouldn't say it's the most no, natural not the swing. No. <laughs> Went over though, counts for one. Yeah. So you're in the middle now and you have to go left foot again. Yeah. Has anyone missed this? No? Nobody's missed the middle and that you should not ask that. <laughs> okay. So pop it over there your weak foot, good lad, and move on. <laughs> <laughs> I 
So we're moving on probably to a weaker, oh sorry, a uh, stronger side. Yeah, it should be more comfortable here. Yeah. Although I wouldn't rule it out. So again, it's quite interesting to see. Obviously different pitches are going to have different widths. This looks a little bit more narrow than uh, some pitches would be in that. Okay, so if you go. Yep, three from three, lad. Um, yeah, we'll move on to this one. This is what we do, yeah? <laughs> this one, okay? Again, make sure you're just shooting where the ball starts. Yep. Have to be strict here. There's a lot of people going to be watching thinking he's buying yards. <sighs> oh, no! Carl. No! What happened there? I tried to start it out too much. <laughs> So we still have uh, three from four. You're going through these pretty quick. You don't really, you wouldn't have I'm been not a free, a free, I've never, not a free taker. I've never been a free taker, even growing up. I never had the privilege no. of it. And you would never even practice. Ah, no, not really. Not, you'd be running off the shoulder and stuff. No, even with Kildare. Start of the year, one of our first sessions back, we did a skills session and it was something similar, shooting like this. Middle. But I think I hit the post on checking every oh, shot. Really? <laughs> yeah. Right, okay. Left foot again. Yeah. Like if you would, you probably have to add points to your game though, as a mistake. I know, one hundred percent. It's something I'm looking at this year. Yeah, so I'll let you focus here. This is a tough one with the left foot. I said hit the post, and I fucking did it. <laughs> so you're the first man I believe to miss down the middle. Let's go to the far side. <laughs> I literally you just talked was, about hitting the post. You knew it was coming. Yeah, when you I hit did. It. You going left foot again, yeah? Oh, no, I'll go it's right. It's up to you, no, I don't want to put you off. Ah, no, it has the angle for the right. Believe it or not, I missed it. Missed the shot from about here in the championship final. Two minutes left to point down, so. In play? In play, yeah. Right, okay. So right. We'll, make, we'll wrong the right. Well done. Skin of the teeth. What way did the ball go in uh, this the final? Uh, <laughs> about another foot the other side yeah. of the post, so similar enough strike. Would, would, that, would you dwell on that much? Uh, ah, not really. Now, look, you have to back yourself to take those shots. Was that to win it? Um, it it would have been up? to level it with okay. about a minute to go. So. And you lost the game of behind? We lost by, yeah, well, two points in the end. They broke out from a counter attack gotcha. and fisted a point. But, right, okay. Um, ah, you have to back yourself to take the shots, I suppose. Absolutely, yeah. So, you've only missed, uh, you've missed two. I've missed okay. two, yeah. So, um, let me get this What right. am I on? Four from six? Four from six. Yeah. Yeah. Glad someone's good at maths. <laughs> so go ahead. Yeah. Just around the D now. Just really take your time and focus, okay? Yeah. Don't rush through it. Come well on, Kev. Stuff. Five from seven. You're gonna head oh, over. Nice. One more beastly Keegan, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're on track now to, to reach maybe top three, top four. Again, just take your time. Wide. Wide. Ah. Ooh. Okay, Kev, let's go to the top of the top D. Of the D. At least if anything, when you're striking from the right side, you're probably uh, not going to the right more. Yeah. Not aiming for the far right post, as the coaches would say. Yeah. Fuck's sake. So this is your ninth shot, and right now you are six from nine or five from eight. Yeah, five. Yeah, from eight. five from eight. This one's all about distance, really, you know. Good, okay, well on. Good stuff. Get, good to get nice. that one before the top big one here. Yeah. So six. Six from nine. Six from nine, okay. So what are you fancying here? 
Oh, I'll give it off the deck for the sake of it, but I've never kicked one in my life, so if I kick a first 45 on this, I'll be happy. Right, fair play to you, okay? So, you're six at the minute, this is for eight, okay? If not, we finish up in six. Distance. And the distance is not the curl. Good lad, six. Cheers. Well done, buddy. Good stuff. Well done. Probably sums stuff. me up as a four, 50% or so. Not so bad. I'll take yeah, it. you'd take 50%, yeah. wouldn't you? Yeah, I wanted six when I started, so I'll take it. Great episode, Kevin. Love being here. Uh, great fun, good workouts, and hope you guys at home enjoyed it as well. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment down below who you want to see in the next episode of the off season, season two. Thank God. Thank God.